This is The Morning Five. I'm your host, Michael Ware, President and CEO of the Center for Christianity and Public Life, giving you five minutes of news and scripture Mondays through Thursdays. Today is Thursday, June 27, 2024. Let's open with scripture. Today I'll read from Luke chapter 6. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. May God bless the reading of his word. Well, good morning. I'm your host, Michael Ware. Thank you so much for listening to The Morning Five. It's a big day, uh, so let's get right to the news. First up, as you may know, uh, there is a, the first presidential debate tonight. Uh, there will be the debate this evening, and then there will be a debate in September. This, this is the, the timing of these debates is, is quite a break from the, the recent norm. I, I will say in uh, argument of your, your watching the debate tonight, we're electing uh, the most powerful person, uh, certainly political leader uh, in the world. Uh, an argument against watching tonight is that uh, these things are spectacles in which you need to wade through so much nonsense and do so much discernment uh, to determine anything of reliable meaning in these things that it might just not be worth it. Uh, I won't settle that argument here. I'll be watching tonight, kind of my job um, for you. Uh, if you watch, just, you know, keep a, keep a cool head. Uh, uh, speaking of spectacle, uh, 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 speaking of spectacle, former President Trump's campaign has let it be known that uh, three of the individuals who are widely uh, expected to be potential running mates for Trump, uh, Governor Doug Burgum of North, of North Dakota, Senator Marco Rubio, and Senator J.D. Vance, uh, will be in attendance at the debate tonight. They'll be uh, uh, speaking to media following the debate, representing the uh, Trump campaign and defending Trump. Uh, Again, speaking of spectacle, uh, this is a pretty pretty uh, savvy way to try and dominate the post-debate spin because people are going to want to hear from uh, these folks who might be Trump's running mate uh, following the debate. Uh, and so, you know, see this for, for what it is. Uh, I actually... There are some aspects of this in which, you know, maybe the Trump campaign is assessing the responses in the debate. I, I actually think that's a sideshow. I think the running mate's already been decided. It may not even be any of the three people uh, that we just discussed. What this is about is about uh, dominating uh, the post-debate uh, uh, commentary uh, on cable news and, and that sort of thing. The next news item, and this is pretty interesting. The Episcopal Church has elected its youngest uh, leader since the 18th century uh, at the, uh, the denomination had its national meeting in Kentucky uh, yesterday and elected Bishop Sean Rowe. Now, point of personal interest, Bishop Rowe uh, served as the Bishop Provisional of the Diocese of Western New York, where I'm from, where Melissa's from. Uh, he's 49 years old. He also uh, serves the Diocese of Northwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, he was elected to a nine-year term as presiding bishop from a slate of five candidates. He'll succeed Bishop Michael Curry uh, and will lead the, the denomination that um, uh, represents millions of, uh, of American Christians as part of the broader Anglican Communion is led by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, 
whose time is um, coming to an end as well, leading the Anglican Communion. And so uh, it's going to be a, a couple of, of years of significant transition for the for the Anglican Communion, though many would argue it's been a decade, two decades, three decades of transition for that communion. And finally, uh, China uh, has become the first uh, nation uh, to collect samples, to execute a, a, a space mission that collects uh, collected samples from the far side of the moon. Uh, China this week became the first country to retrieve rocks and other materials uh, from the lunar hemisphere. According to the Washington Post, uh, China also said that the U.S. Uh, can't stop it from making, quote, giant steps in space. Now, of course, this has all kinds of scientific implications, but also looming in the background, and really not too far in the background, is uh, sort of the space race in terms of uh, military capabilities. And this is China asserting itself in that way as well. All right, that's the news for today. Let's close with prayer. Dear Father, always near us, may your name be treasured and loved. May your rule be completed in us. May your will be done here on earth in just the way it is done in heaven. Give us today the things we need today, and forgive us our sins and impositions on you, as we are forgiving all who in any way offend us. Please don't put us through trials, but deliver us from everything bad, because you are the one in charge, and you have all the power, and the glory too is all yours forever which is just the way we want it. All right, friends, thank you for joining me today. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. Uh, if you watch the debate tonight, uh, let us know uh, what you think of it. Um, I am in Colorado Springs with uh, the Center for Christianity and Public Life's Public Life Fellows. Uh, will not be... Uh, uh, will not be live... Uh, uh, live streaming or live uh, tweeting about about the debate tonight, uh, but we'll look forward to uh, seeing your reactions on social media and in my inbox. All right, as always, the Morning Five is brought to you in partnership with the That Sounds Fun Network, supported by the Center for Christianity and Public Life. Hope you have a wonderful day.